Just when you thought it was safe to submit an idea to your employer, hold on. Before you do, read The Anatomy of a Corporate Lynching, Updated Edition, and Avoid the Great White Sharks. Available on Amazon Worldwide. And hear the audiobook featuring a cast of actors delivering the facts exclusively at fourthfordbooks.com. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. I'm here. We're doing our thing. I hope you guys are up late with me. We're doing a late night broadcast, which is what we do sometimes. But we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I need you guys to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and retweet this and let everybody know that we're live right now. Let them know that we're live because we're going to chop up some very good game on tonight's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that real quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. So don't you move a muscle. Let everybody know we're here. We will be right back right here on Tariq Radio. Don't move a muscle. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed. Available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack. And the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game. Jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game. Jive chumps. Ladies, are you suffering from hair loss? Has alopecia been a battle that you just can't win? Well, you need to check out She and Her Hair Studio because that's the solution for you. They're located in Staten Island, New York, and She and Her Hair Studio is the North Shore's premier salon. It's a full-service salon created solely to provide clients with a comfortable, safe, and unforgettable experience. Check them out right now at sheandherstudio.com. Give them an email at sheandherstudio at gmail.com right now. Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is powersellerresearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com. What's up, family? Check out DebudMarketing.com. Do you know the CARES Act administered by the IRS currently has tax credits, that means cash, available for businesses that were hurt by the pandemic during 2020 and 21? If you had five W-2 employees and were shut down, you probably qualify. Check out TheBudMarketing.com and fill out a five-minute questionnaire. That's D-E-B-U-D-D -D Marketing.com. 
If you're a business owner like me, then you know that missing phone calls equals losing revenue. Did you know that 30% of clients don't leave messages when their calls go unanswered? Top Tier Talks is your solution. Top Tier Talks is 100% black-owned, U.S.-based virtual receptionist company that can take your important phone calls, set appointments, take complete orders, and answer your clients' questions, all while you focus on what's important, running your business. Visit us today at toptiertalks.com and let us help you take your business to the next level. Stop missing phone calls, stop losing revenue, and start using Top TopTierTalks.com. Do you have a small business or do you want to start your own business? Do you need business development and sales support services? You're tired of your dead-end job and you need a new career? Reach out to my brother Junius James at Junius James Incorporated. He has a nonprofit organization in Milwaukee that specializes in empowering the black community. Give him a call at 1-855-Junius-James. That's 855-586-4875. They are a black-owned business, and they're down to provide services nationwide. Give them a call right now for some employment opportunities. Got a great business idea but don't have the money to get started? Or maybe you have an existing business that needs more funding to take it to the next level. Vester Bridge can help. Vester Bridge is a crowdfunding platform where Black-owned businesses and entrepreneurs can get grassroots funding to launch their next business venture. You can kickstart your campaign in minutes and start getting people to back your business or idea today. Go to VesterBridge.com to create your free account right now. That's V-E-S-T-O-R-B-R-I-D-G-E.com. V-E-S-T-O-R. B-R-I-D-G-E dot com. What's up, family? You guys need to check out this cookie company out of Houston, Texas called The Cookie Confidant. Man, they sell these beautiful, delicious, huge cookies right out of Houston, Texas, man. And the brother has been in business since 2017. And I've tried these cookies, man. They are bomb, bomb, bomb. Very delicious. My personal favorite are the chocolate chip pecan cookies, man. They are bomb. Y'all need to go to cookieconfidant.com. To get these cookies, black owned company, man, they got chocolate chip peanut butter cookies, white chocolate cookies with sprinkles, man. So anything you like in a cookie, they got it. So again, go to cookieconfidant.com. That's cookieconfidant.com. Check out Divine Essential Minerals right now. Divine Essential Minerals is a black-owned vitamins and mineral supplement business that offers a variety of high-quality vitamins and minerals in capsule form. Capsules such as sea moss infused with bladder rack, burdock root, elderberry, lion's mane, dandelion root, and many, many more. Use the coupon code Tariq15 to get 15% off at checkout. Invest in your health care and your self-care right now by going to DivineEMinerals.com. Again, that's DivineEMinerals.com. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Oh, goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think it, you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems, you have it. Maximum strip, hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon juice, and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready, that evil on lurk. Yeah. Let's get down to it. You are now tuned in to the Godfather of the Game. Often imitated and always celebrated. Stop sloganary. Sloganary kills people. Hey yo, check this out. It's Tariq Nasheed on Tariq Radio. Let's go. Let's go. Be my goddamn thumb alone. Oh, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we are back. Oh, we are back. Glad to have y'all tuning in on the late night tip. Glad y'all are up with me. Chopping it up like family chops it up. Again, I'm going to need y'all to hit that like button. I'm going to need y'all to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so they can um, notify you when I go live. And, and retweet this. If you're on Twitter, retweet the link for the broadcast right now. So let's get into it, man. We're going to talk deep tonight. Let's get into some stuff tonight. We're going to get deep tonight. And by the way, I'm still going to show, I'm going to show the trailer 
for the new film. I'll keep you guys posted. There's been so much going on this week. I just haven't had a chance to get a whole bunch of stuff together because when I announced the trailer, I also want to introduce a package deal. I've been promising you guys the package deal. So all of that is going to tie in. I got a package deal that I've been promising you guys for like the last couple of months because the last time we did a package deal, we sold out in like two days. So all of this stuff is going to be tied in. I just got to get everything ready so we can, bam, get it out there to the family. So I keep you guys posting. Posted. I keep you guys posted. I'm sorry. But listen. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Fox Soul. Me and my good brother, Marcel Dixon. And I hope you guys out there in South Carolina are going to go out there and hit the polls for our brother, Marcel Dixon. He's running for Jim Clyburn's seat. Y'all need to be out there ready, ready, ready. Supporting our brother. See, if we, uh, y'all know how I am about voting. Do not vote unless there's somebody on the ballot that's going to carry the agenda for Foundation of Black Americans. And our brother Marcel is carrying that agenda, so we need to support that brother. Out there in South Carolina, y'all need to support that brother heavy. But me and that brother, we were on Fox Soul. And we were having an immigration debate with some um, some non-FBA lawyers. And Lord, it was just it it was unfair. We we whooped them so bad intellectually, I almost felt bad. <laughs> I almost felt bad. The intellectual circles we were running around them, it was almost an unfair fight. It, 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 it was when you, you're beating somebody so bad, you start feeling sorry for them low key. Because, but one of them, one of the chicks, it, it was a, a Haitian brother and this this woman from Guyana down there in South America. The Haitian brother, you know, I, I was whooping him so bad, the brother starts stuttering like crazy. I said, oh my God. Yeah, I don't want to beat somebody who's already on the ropes. And I kind of felt bad for him. But the lady though, she was very condescending. Did y'all, the, the lady, what's her name? Ken, what was her name? Kenda something. She has, has a Hispanic last name, but she's a very, um, she's a black sister. She was kind of condescending to Foundation of Black Americans. Kenda, that Kenda lady, she was saying some, she was kind of being a little reckless. So, you know, she had to get that work. She was talking about how she's from the Caribbean and ain't no racism in the Caribbean and oh lord so y'all know we had to do what we had to do on that one yeah when we start hitting them and re and and giving them retorts to their narratives boy the it was these long uncomfortable silences they didn't know what to say it was like we were sh literally shutting them down but that Kenda lady boy she was a piece of work so it's on this channel y'all take a listen to it Y'all take a listen to it. And the Kenda lady, by the way, I, I don't know too much about her background, but do you smell zaddy juice? I smell zaddy juice somewhere. Yeah, did you? I, I got some zaddy loving energy from her. I'm pretty sure there's a zaddy somewhere. Yeah, the, the Kenda lady kept talking about, yeah, we come over here for opportunities. We don't want to deal with racism. Y'all deal with the racism. That's you guys. Y'all deal with racism. We come here for the opportunities. And, and, and I get offended by that. Because when people talk about they come over here to America because America has so many opportunities and they're talking about how bad it was at home, but how hard they work. My thing is, listen, the opportunities that you get, where do you think those opportunities come from for black people? Where do you think those opportunities come from? It, it wasn't like white people just magically started giving them away to black people. The fact that you're able to come over and take advantage of these opportunities you keep talking about, it didn't come from the opportunity tree. It didn't come from the mysterious opportunity Rosetta Stone. These opportunities for black people came from foundational black Americans fighting with these white supremacists so that black people can get something. 
So I really take offense to people who come over here talking about we we FBAs talk about racism too much and there's so many opportunities. We had to fight and get our heads bashed in for those opportunities to be available for non-white people. Always understand that. But y- y'all got to listen to it. Y'all j- just listen to the interview. It'll get you it'll get you riled up. But listen to it. Me and my brother Marcel was handling it. Marcel was hitting him on all four cylinders like he always does. That brother's always on top of his game. But it is what it is. But um Speaking of voting, by the way, because like I said, you only vote when you're going to have a candidate that's going to bring tangibles or going to do something that's going to directly help black people. Now, down there in Atlanta, there was another story that came out. There was some sisters that were gaffled up, some college students, I think it was a sister and a brother, who were pulled out of a car at gunpoint. They were completely innocent by the damn Atlanta police. They got hemmed up for nothing. There were charges put on him by um, Paul Howard, the last DA out there. And I was telling people, you got to support Paul Howard, man, because he's putting charges on these damn race soldiers. He's putting charges on the race soldiers. So we need to rock with this brother because this is what we need. This is going to set a great precedent. And what happens is when we start flexing power, a lot of Negroes start getting scared. We get right to the door of empowerment and then drop the damn ball out of fear. They let the brother Paul Howard get taken out of office by Fonnie Willis. I've been, I've warned people about Fonnie. And they let, they let her get elected. And Fonnie has been sitting up here caping for the cops, sabotaging these cases, thwarting these cases. Again, she thwarted the case about the brother who got shot at the Wendy's restaurant. Paul Howard put charges on that race soldier. She sat there and thwarted that. And then this case where the, the, the students got pulled out the car, she thwarted that. She's like, oh, I ain't going to touch it. Uh, it's a conflict of interest and gave it to this East Indian, I think, special prosecutor, and he dropped it. So she's the fall mammy. And people don't complain because y'all sat up there and let the fall mammy, Fanny the mammy, y'all let her do all that stuff because y'all could have made a power move and let our brother Paul stay in office so that he could handle these race soldiers. We got to start flexing power and stop being afraid of power. We have to stop. Yeah, they got tasered. Okay, somebody in the chat room said they got dragged out the car and tasered. Yeah, they they really roughed them up from what I understand. So y'all better thank Fonnie. Thank Fonnie for thwarting that one too. I told people from day one, that woman is bad news. She's going to go in there and put the cape on for the race soldiers because we already pointed out, even before she got elected, she was all clicked in with the police union. She was getting money from the unions. I said, man, this is bad news, Atlanta. I said, Atlanta, this woman is bad news. Don't let her be your DA. Now look at what happens. She's letting these race soldiers get off and and trying to pawn it off on these so-called special prosecutors who's going to do the dirty work for for her so she can act like she did. I didn't have nothing to do with it. But when it comes to her putting RICO charges on black rappers, well, she's all front and center for that. Okay? She's giving the race soldiers passes for harming black folks, but she's throwing these RICO charges. She's up there loud and proud, had her edges pressed down, bragging about putting those RICO charges on Young Thug and Gunner and all of those people. Come on, Atlanta. Oh, God. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. I digress. See, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about creating monsters and allowing monsters to fester. When we have mammy monsters, see, we're talking about different monsters. Sometimes in our society, we have mammy monsters that we don't do anything about. When you see a mammy monster being built because the white supremacists create these mammy monsters... We can't empower them by ignoring them. We have to say, hey, no, no, no. We're not going to let you put the mammy monster in certain positions because they're going to harm us. And everybody wants to be out here twerking, dancing, jerking around, messing around when the the white supremacists are creating these monsters and putting these monsters in strategic positions to undermine us and carry the water for white supremacy. The white supremacists are good at creating monsters. And here's the thing. We're going to talk about how them doing that, creating monsters, can turn around and backfire on them. See, this is what we're seeing now. 
down there in Texas, down with, with these school shootings. See, they've created monsters and now the monsters are coming back to turn on them. And if you look at the picture now, it's a picture of the old Frankenstein movie. Now let's uh, let's study this for a minute. Now there's a lot of analogies with Frankenstein. In fact, um, when Frankenstein was created as a novel, it was created in the early 1800s by Mary Shelley, a white woman. I think she was from the UK. And when they started doing stage play adaptions, adaptations of the Frankenstein creature, they would actually use black actors that they would put on black face. The Frankenstein monster was portrayed as a black person. There's different allegories to this, them creating a monster, which is the slave and the slave turning on them. That's one allegory. Because the Negro mind oftentimes is created by the white supremacists and anything negative that happens in black society, it can be attributed to the white supremacists because they created the circumstances in which we were forced to live in. Don't ever let the white supremacists try to get away with blaming black folks, oh, it's your culture, oh, it's just who you are, your culture. You have become a part of our cultures because of the sub subjugation you've inflicted upon us. If there's anything negative in black society, the white supremacists are 100% to blame for it. Because when we do better, you sabotage us every single time without any exception. Every single time we start to thrive and do better, the white supremacists come along and they snatch the rug from under us. You understand? We have to put the blame where the blame is due. A lot of them would try to say, well, all you black folks, you need to take responsibility. We cannot take full responsibility because we are milita militarily conquered by you white supremacists. See, they got us blaming ourselves for a lot of stuff. But the thing is, they are to blame because they create the prison system called white supremacy. You understand? And we have to blame them for the circumstance, just like in prison. Things that go on in the prison, the prison masters are responsible for that. Everything negative that goes on in the prisons, the prison masters and the wardens, they are responsible for that because they control everything within the prison system. Excuse me, y'all, I got some audio in the back. They control everything negative within the prison system. And every time we try to come up, they find a way to poke a hole in it. And like I said on my other broadcast, mysteriously, whenever black people come up with a certain invention, all of a sudden, we end up getting knocked off or some kind of so-called weird suicide. Something crazy happens to us whenever we come up with some kind of invention that will empower us and other black people. See, we're fine as long as we're struggling and begging and crying. And they'll come out there, especially when we get harmed. When we get harmed, they'll come out there and instead of helping us, they'll come out there and condescendingly say, well, why don't you guys forgive? Do you guys forgive? Now, they keep they keep talking to us about forgiveness. But family, with this tragedy down there in Texas, this um white Hispanic male shot up all of these children at a school, like 21 people shot and killed. Have you heard anybody talking about forgiveness, family? Have you seen any CNN reporter or Fox News reporter or MSNBC reporter running down there in Texas with a camera in those families' faces talking about, do you forgive this white Hispanic male who killed your babies? Do you see any of that? They wouldn't dare do that because they know how disrespectful that is. And they do it to us because they want, they want to be disrespectful. But the situation in Buffalo, like I said, I got some questions about that because, again, 
the white supremacist who was casing out that place he was casing out that place for a couple of months from what I understand and again I'm going to ask the question why was he casing out a place that he was going to do a random shooting on if you're going to do a random shooting and you're just going to shoot random people what is the purpose of casing the place out what's the purpose why would you case a place out and you're just going to do a random shooting I say that the guy might have been just casing out that black security guard who was a former cop who worked there because you case out a place to get the patterns of a common denominator, somebody who's going to be there every day. You want to look at somebody's patterns. You don't case out a place if you're just going to shoot random customers. You case out a place if you want to see somebody's patterns. And it looks like they were looking at the pattern of that black security guard. And I talked about this the other day, that black security guard created an alternative energy water system. He created an alternative water system, a hydro electric water system, some alternative energy. And the minute you start doing that, all of a sudden, something pops off and you get got or you get threatened or something happens to you. This happens all the time. So yes, it's okay to put your tinfoil kufi on. Because, see, when you start messing with big oil money and big oil and big pharmaceutical, big pharma, that's a problem. And even white people, when they start messing with that kind of money, when they start talking about, hey, these medicines that they got out here, these medicines are dangerous and you need to get alternative medicines. Remember, there was a white man. I think his name was Bradstreet, Dr. Bradstreet. I think that's his name. I think that's his name, if I'm not mistaken. Let me let me double check because I don't I, I want to be right and exact. Hold on, let me make sure. Hold on, let me double check. Okay, yeah, there, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Bradstreet. All right. It was a guy some years back, going all the way back to 2015, named Jeff Bradstreet. It was a white man, and he was telling people, hey man, y'all better stop giving your kids these vaccines. These vaccines are giving kids autism. And he was coming through with receipts and the whole nine yards and he was he was coming with alternative uh, medicines to, to combat that. And he was blowing the whistle. Dr. Jeff Bradstreet, that's his name. All right, and what happened to Dr. Jeff Bradstreet? Well, this happened to him. The mysterious mis mysterious death of a doctor who peddled autism cures to thousands. Oh yeah, he mysteriously died when his body was found in the Rocky Broad River in the mountainous North Carolina. Let me show you the thing. Oh, where is it? His body was found with a bullet wound to the chest all right. And they said that he killed himself and the family said, no, he did not kill himself. You don't go to the mountains and shoot yourself in the damn chest. All right. So this guy was up here telling people, hey, he was screaming it loud and he was this guy testified before Congress. So this wasn't no slacker. This was a credible dude. Dr. Jeff Bradstreet said, hey, man. Y'all better leave these vaccines alone, man. It's giving these babies autism. And they got him out of there. You, you see what I'm saying? They do this to white people. So you know what they do to black people. So whenever we start talking about clean energy systems and alternative energy systems, when somebody comes up with an idea and say, hey, wait a minute, we don't need to use gas and oil. You got a target on your damn back. You understand what I'm saying? Big oil and big pharma, they don't play that, that game. And big pharmaceuticals and big oil, the oil co corporations, and which is the monopoly, by the way. They they had to break them up in little um, um, sub companies, but the oil industry is a monopoly. It's, it's monopolized by the Rockefeller family. And also, what's, what's interesting, big pharmaceutical companies, big pharma, 
that's owned by the the oil company too. Did y'all know that? I think I talked about that before. Big Pharmaceuticals and Big Oil is one of the same. Big Pharma, Big Oil is the same thing. Controlled both by the Rockefellers because 99% of all pharmaceuticals use petrochemicals, which comes from oil. You understand that? A lot of the drugs and medicines come from petrochemicals from petroleum, from the oil. And I'm talking about almost everything down to the creams, the creams and the ointments and the lotions and the syrups and the medicines and the tablets and the caplets. That comes from petrochemicals, which comes from petroleum. Even your daily, everyday household products. If you have Vaseline in your house, look and see what Vaseline really is. It says right on the box, on the bottle of the can, Vaseline, the the chemical name of it is petroleum jelly. Petroleum is oil. That's from oil family. That is oil. Big Pharma, big oil, that's the same thing. They got a monopoly on the transportation industry and the pharmaceutical industry. And Rockefeller once said, famously said, Competition is a sin. I want y'all to Google that. Rockefeller, John Rockefeller, the patriarch to the Rockefeller family, he once said, competition is a sin, meaning ain't gonna be no competition, bitch. We gotta monopolize this stuff. And if they say we gotta break up the monopoly, we'll just um, break our company up into 10, 15 different pieces and it's still run by us. You understand? But when they started using pharmaceuticals and medicines from that petroleum and petrochemicals, that's the thing that started a lot of cancer. A lot of people before they were using these pharmaceutical drugs, they would use natural things. A lot of times they would use natural elixirs. Once people started using these drugs from the Rockefeller pharmaceutical companies, that's when cancer started popping off real heavy in people. And then what did Rockefeller do? Rockefeller founded the American Cancer Association. Look at that. That's from the Rockefeller Foundation. And then they said, we at the American Cancer Association, we're going to do some research and see if the drugs from the big pharmaceutical companies really cause cancer. And guess what? We found out that it didn't. So leave them alone or leave us alone because we're one and the same. So we control the oil, we control the pharmaceuticals, and we control the American Cancer Association that gives reports on what really causes cancer. And we say that we didn't cause cancer. Google everything that I'm saying, family. Google and see who all owns what. Somebody said there's a brother named Maxwell Chikambuzo. He created a free energy like Tesla and they're trying to kill him. There was another brother in Jamaica, a Jamaican brother. He created um, an energy system. He had a, a, a compartment on his car that would run off water. They were threatening him. Over there in South Africa, the brother, it was a brother who created this water system, this clean water system. He mysteriously fell out of a window family there was another brother out here when the flint crisis was going on brother named moses west he was a veteran brother named moses west he created something called the green machine where it could get moisture from the atmosphere and create clean water he created this machine that could get moisture from the atmosphere black man he took it out to flint to give people clean water do you know they vandalized that brother's stuff? I want, and let me show y'all an interview from this brother. They vandalized his machine, and I want y'all to hear this interview, and I want y'all to hear what he said in this interview when they vandalized his stuff. Hold on, let me find the link right here. Hold on. All right, right here. This is our brother here, Brother Moses West, veteran. Now listen to this, family. Hold on one second. Wait, wait, wait. Let me turn the. All right. They drain 
fuel. Uh, they added something to the coolant lines. They played with the electronics. Uh, that's not typical vandal stuff. Less than a week after bringing free water to Flint, Moses West says the green machine he designed to do just that was vandalized. Once they broke into the machine and uh, uh, they destroyed the, the generator, very technical. They knew what they were doing. It wasn't just, you know, random vandalism. Not at all. Vandalism. You know, it wasn't just later. Very technical. They knew what they were doing. Well, they knew what they were doing. Very technical. They knew what they were doing. Generator. Very technical. They knew what they were doing. It wasn't just, you know, random vandalism. Not at all. Uh, they destroyed the battery. Uh, put metal in the fuel system. I saw that when I was cleaning the fuel filter. West is a military veteran who travels across the country to areas in crisis, bringing a machine he designed like this one that literally makes fresh water out of thin air. He put the green machine out for people along Saginaw Street on Thursday and was hoping to make a big impact. He says before the vandalism, they were giving hundreds of people free water every day. You got to look at uh, I'm making anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 gallons of water a day and giving away for free. That's a that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of money out of somebody's pocket someplace. What says that he can own? That's that's a lot of that's a lot of money out of somebody's pocket someplace. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of money out of somebody's pocket someplace. So yeah, sometimes you got to put the tinfoil koofy on, family. Yeah, I got it on real tight. Yeah, I got it on real tight, family. Sometimes you got to put that tinfoil koofy on. That brother said, hey, this ain't no random vandalism. Somebody knew exactly what they were doing when they came and vandalized this. He knew. This brother knew. It wasn't no, this wasn't random. It wasn't like a crackhead or something. No, he said somebody knew exactly what to sabotage. They knew where to go. Somebody had some type of knowledge of mechanics where they knew exactly where to go and how to go into this machine and sabotage it. He said, I must be made. Somebody is somewhere is losing money because I'm giving away free water helping the people. This brother knew what, what was up. He knew what was up. Like I said, he knew when we start doing stuff like that, when we start creating things and we're taking care of the community, that's a power move. That is a power move, ladies and gentlemen. And you're messing with their money. You understand? Don't, don't ever let people try to shame us. See, this is why I say don't let folks shame you, black folks, because when we do stuff like this, when we start creating things to take care of our people, they come along and sabotage it. That's why we never take our eye off the ball of white supremacy. We never take our eye off them. Yeah, because they like to do that. When they sabotage stuff, they like to bring it up. They'll, they'll like to blame it on gang members and crackheads. Oh, it was a crackhead. No, no, no. Wasn't no crackhead who did this. It wasn't no random crackhead. No random person trying to steal metal parts. No, no, no. This, somebody knew exactly where to go. They got instructions on how exactly to sabotage this machine so that it would not work no more. You did? And I hope our brother's doing good now. But like I said, let me, we, we, we're talking about creating monsters. I'm tying all of this stuff in. Now let's bring it back down to the Texas situation that's going on down here. Because now a lot of people are talking about these poor babies and, and, and my heart goes out to the family, these poor babies that got shot and kill that's horrible that is a horrible thing and a, a lot of these folks down there in texas some of these people in the dominant society boy they're like oh my god this is horrible the nra they were they, they got some event happening down there and there's some people who are supposed to perform there they're pulling out they don't want to be associated with the nra now and a, a lot of people are running around how could this happen how could this happen how could this happen one thing is that when you create cowards and you reward cowardice, all that does is create more cowards. <clears throat> and a lot of people in law enforcement that we have now are cowards. The shooting down there, there's been several reports that during the shooting, 
the police officers down there in Yavaldi, Texas, I think that's the name of it, many of them were afraid to go inside the school to stop this white Hispanic shooter. A lot of them were afraid to go in. And look at some of the reports here. Let me show you all some of the, the links here. Onlookers urge police to charge into the Texas elementary school. Soon after the shooting began, they did not do that. A lot of those cops were standing outside cowering. All right, you have some of the people saying, go in there, go in there. People were shouting. While the shooting was going on, the cops were standing outside trembling. People are talking about the cops. They were unprepared. See, this is what you, people get for sitting up here calling these people brave because they sit up here and ambush black people. Talking about refund the police. Y'all give the police all this money. They don't do a damn thing. See, this is what people, you get what you pay for. You don't reward cowards. You don't reward cowards. Them going around ambushing black people, they thought that was cute until some real business got down and happened. Now these cowards ain't doing nothing. More people complain. Let me show some more links here. More people complaining about the, the cops not doing anything. Cops stood outside the school while the, the shooter, the killer rampaged inside. Onlookers yelled at them to go in. They didn't. Some people are like, let's rush in because the cops aren't doing anything like they're supposed to. This is what you get from rewarding cowardice. These cops are cowards out here. They're only brave when they're sneaking up and they're not even brave when they're ambushing black people, shooting black people in the back of the head over traffic violations. And cowardly Biden and cowardly Kamala was up here talking about we're going to refund the police. The right wing and the left wing are all on the same code. The only thing that people like about the damn police is that they get to subjugate black people. That's the only thing they like about them. The police are completely incompetent. They don't stop crime. They don't do anything but subjugate us. That's it. Do not complain about the police now. Shut the hell up. That's a monster you created. A cowardly monster. That's the danger of creating monsters. Produce justice get people on the police force who's not going to be doing these cowardly ambush shootings they're going to keep their eyes open and produce justice so when a suspected race soldier or a, a vigilante pops up they're going to keep their eyes on them instead of being on code with them you spend so much money and resources trying to target black people with these white supremacist groups within law enforcement. You're sitting up here giving the real white killers a pass and then letting them become bigger monsters. You get what you pay for. You created monsters and now the monsters is letting you down. You understand? When you create monsters, this is what happens. And the thing is, with this guy, this killer, I keep telling people this is a result of the Rittenhouse effect, see? When people let Rittenhouse get away with what he did, that cowardly move that Rittenhouse did, People in the dominant society knew that it was a cowardly move. They knew it was a cowardly ambush killing. They sat here and thought, okay, this is our opportunity to really stick it to the black people. Because let's be clear, the whole cow Rittenhouse propping up, that's supposed to be the dominant society sticking it to black people. Even though Rittenhouse shot white people, these were white people who were trying to fight and defend black people. Rittenhouse and his other white supremacist cronies, they showed up to a, 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 a an anti-black racism rally, okay? They showed up to an anti-black racism rally hoping to ambush people, as Cal Rittenhouse said in a previous video before he went to Kenosha. He said, I wish I had a gun. I would pick these people off to something to that effect. 
So it was premeditated to a certain degree. And they know it. That's why the judge who was on the white supremacist code didn't let all that information in. See, they were creating a monster with Kyle Rittenhouse and coddling this cowardly little punk, Kyle Rittenhouse. The white media, they also coddled him by not showing the video of him beating up a girl at school, showing the, the kind of cowardly punk he was. They sat here allowing this narrative to be written about Kyle Rittenhouse that he was somehow a victim, which he wasn't. He went there to cause havoc. He was a coward. He was a violent punk. He went there and ambushed a bunch of people, and then they propped him up like a hero, went in the courtroom. The courtroom, the, the white supremacists in the court were on code with him. They created a monster, and they created other monsters. That set a bad precedent. And all for them trying to stick it to us. They thought Kyle Rittenhouse was going to be a jab at us. Now it has turned around and bit him in the ass. Now you got these white shooters running around here. Eight, all of them the same age as Kyle, 18 years old, running around here. Family, the, the shooting out there in, in at the school in Texas, that was yesterday. There was another situation today where... There was a school, I think, in Dallas, somewhere around Dallas, where they caught another student with a firearm. Right here, let me show y'all the links of the story. Student caught with firearm outside of Texas High School a day after the deadly shooting. So there was another cat out there with some type of AR-15 type of weapon, but they stopped him. So yeah, they've created monsters. They have created monsters in the dominant society. By letting Kyle Rittenhouse do what he do, coddling him and making him a hero. You've created monsters. Let's go back to Frankenstein. Let's go back to the Frankenstein narrative. Now Frankenstein was actually the name of the doctor. The movie is named after Dr. Frankenstein and the monster really didn't have a name. But over the years, people started calling the monster Frankenstein. But Frankenstein was about this doctor, Victor Frankenstein, who went to the, the cemetery with his assistant Igor or Fritz or whatever his name is. They went to the a graveyard. They were grave digging, which was something that was big in Europe at one point. But they, they got a dead body took it to a lab and did some experiments on it and Dr. Frankenstein wanted to play God. He wanted to see if he could bring somebody to life. So he sold this man together, put a brain in it. I think he got the brain from a mentally ill person. They got the brain from a an insane asylum or something like that and put the brain inside of the dead body, sold the head together and created this, this humanoid being. But it was a monster. And what happened, he created this monster and then he couldn't control the monster. And what happened is the monster ended up killing Dr. Frankenstein and then the monster went on a rampage and started killing other people. The monster started killing kids. You understand? So the monster turned on the person who created him. And that's an allegory for white supremacy. See, they create these monsters and sooner or later, the monsters that they create turn on them because evil cannot be contained. You can't really contain evil. You think evil is cute and funny as long as the evil is being done to black folks. As long as the black people are being disenfranchised and being harmed and being abused and subjugated and whipped and degraded it's okay but then that evil turns on the dominant society sometimes and then they want to say what happened what happened is you happened you created this you put this in motion and a lot of you people in the dominant society you have created these monsters who's running around here shooting up schools left and right like they're insane y'all sit up here trying to use these code words talking about Chicago and all of that stuff. Yeah, they ain't running around shooting up whole schools of kids in Chicago. They're not doing that. Fix the problem at home. 
and th don't try to de-whitify these people too. They love to do that. When somebody pulls off a school shooting, all of a sudden they ain't white no more, they're Hispanic. No, he's white. The guy down there in Texas, he's a white Hispanic. Own up to that, that's what it is. He's a white Hispanic. But the thing is, with that shooter down there, and these other shooters, all of that, that's directly affected and that comes from this right here. See, they thought, y'all thought in the dominant society this was cute right here. You thought this was cute, getting a cowardly punk who did an ambush killing and parading him around like a hero like this. What type of precedent do you think this was going to set? What type of message did you think this was going to send to a bunch of other losers who's a loser like Kyle? See, y'all thought you were sticking it to black folks with this right here. Don't let them fool you with all that. Well, he shot some white guys. You know, he shot some white guys who were protecting black people at an anti-black racism march, okay? Let's always put that in context. And they'll use a couple of white people as proxies for black people if they can. Let's be very clear. They thought this was cute and you tip your hand too much and then you created these monsters. So all of you got blood on your hands if you were sitting up here caping for Kyle the Killer Rittenhouse. And look at the stuff they were saying about this killer. The justifications and, and things they were talking about with him trying to find out why he did what he did, trying to come up with these excuses. That's another way to create monsters with these guys, coming up with these excuses with these guys. Now look at this. Look at what they were talking about. The Texas shooter, Salvador Ramos, was bullied at school because of the clothes he wore and because his family was poor, former classmates said. So they're talking about he was so poor and he couldn't afford cool clothes. His clothes were janky and raggedy. He was so poor. He was bullied because he was so poor. He was so poor. He was so poor. Okay. If he was so damn poor, ladies and gentlemen, how did he afford two choppers? How did this dude, if he's so poor where he can't even buy decent clothes, this guy was able to buy two choppers, two AR-15 rifles. And he purchased them legally. And he's sitting up here with the damn iPhone, the iPhone 13. That's not a cheap device. Now how he got an iPhone 13, he's so poor he can't get his, his clothes and his, his drip right. How did he afford these guns? His parents didn't give it to him when he was living with his grandparents. His grandparents didn't give him those guns. All right. Let, let's, let's, let's unpack this thing here. His grandparents didn't give him the gun. This is his granddad here, by the way. His granddad was like, um, I had no idea he had guns. So the grandparents didn't buy him the gun. Where did he get these guns? Somebody said he had a job at a fast food place. Okay, you still, if you have a, a job at a fast food place, you got you can buy you some clothes. Which I don't know how true that is if he worked at a worked a job at a fast food place. But damn, how you get two choppers if you that damn poor? Who's funding this dude? And let's be clear, it wasn't like he was getting them on the underground market where you could get them cheap. Because somebody, I asked, I asked this question on Twitter. And I was like, hey, where did this guy get his gun? Where did the guys in Chicago get their guns? Where did the gang members get their guns? Well, they get them from the underground market. They're not going and getting the guns. They're not getting choppers legally because if they did, they would be on all types of um, lists. So a lot of the guys in the so-called hood, you know, in the hood, there's trains that show up with guns magically. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to get something in the hood. But these white boys are going into these gun stores and getting them legally this guy he got the gun legally all right his parents didn't give him the gun he got that gun legally and this guy had some some type of body armor on so where is he getting all these guns and all of these 
outfits with body armor, but he can't get no drip. He can't go down to City Trends and get him a couple of $20 outfits so he can get his swag on. Some ain't adding up, family. Something is not adding up. Yeah, his granddad is a felon, so his granddad can't have guns. So who's funding these guys? See, this is what I want to know. These guys, these 18-year-olds with no money and no job or no decent job, living in trailer parks who's supposed to be so poor, they're popping up with $1,000 and $1,500 guns and all of these hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars worth of body armor. The guy in Buffalo had all that expensive body armor. Remember, they were shooting at him. They didn't hit him. The, the black security guard shot at him, but yeah, he had body armor on that 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 repelled uh, the bullets. So my thing, they keep trying to lone whoop these guys. I don't think these guys are lone wolves. I don't think these guys are lone wolves at all, man. I think there's a network of these dudes out here who's being funded by these little white supremacist terror cells. That's what I think, ladies and gentlemen. I think there's these little terror cells that's underground and law enforcement is connected with them. Remember, law enforcement is connected with the Boogaloo Boys and the Boogaloo Boys were shooting cops and law enforcement is connected with them. Don't fall for that back the blue talk. They don't give a damn about no blue. It's all about backing the white, meaning white supremacy. They're all about backing white supremacy. They don't give a damn about backing no blue. But again, people thought that Kyle Rittenhouse thing was real cute. Him running around here ambushing people and they're propping him up as a hero. And now this Ramos dude is running around. He Well, he's dead now. He ran around here killing those babies. Knowing he's a loser, but see, when you, you parade a Kyle Rittenhouse around, you tell these losers, you telegraph the messages, hey, yeah, I'm a loser now, but let me, if I do this brazen act, I can die a hero like Kyle. My life can mean something. I can be like Kyle Rittenhouse. My life can mean something. I can go out in infamy. And speaking of that, and speaking of, let me show y'all some irony right here. Do y'all know one of the fathers of one of the victims God bless our heart. One of the little girls, sweet little girls who got killed, which is horrible. And, you know, I, I my heart goes out to any grieving family. But I, this is something that's very ironic. The irony is there and the irony is not lost. One of the fathers of the children, or one of the children, right here, this guy... They looked back at some of his Facebook pages, Facebook post. This is one of the fathers. He's holding up a picture of his his child and, you know, God bless the baby. That's horrible. But they looked at his Facebook and this dude was up here posting a bunch of stuff about Kyle Rittenhouse. Alfred Garza, he was up here giving praise and props to Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, he was up here bragging about Kyle Rittenhouse, ladies and gentlemen. He was up here giving props to Kyle. He was praising Killer Kyle. Oh, the irony. Not saying, I'm not trying to say anything justifies these babies getting harmed, but man, you better watch what you praise. You better watch what you praise, family. Don't praise no cowardly act like that. And then that same cowardly act turns around and harms you and your family. That's why you don't you don't praise that. You don't praise that. You don't praise no mess like Kyle Rittenhouse. You don't do that. And then that same energy, that same cowardly energy comes back on you and your family. No. That ain't cool. That's why you always produce justice. Always go for justice. Y'all think it's cool and slick creating these monsters. And then these monsters you create turn on you. You don't co-sign filth like Rittenhouse and these others. Y'all made a mistake in the dominant society trying to be cute, thinking that you're going to take a shot at us. See, white supremacy is suicidal. They'll die 
as as long as they can take shots at us, they'll they'll take an L as long as they get to stick it to us one good time. You understand? Watch what you praise. You don't sit up praising non-justice just because you think you're going to stick it to us. Boy, that energy is real. Y'all creating these monsters. When you create a monster, understand that monster can always come back and get you. But see, all these people are trying to get on the white supremacist code and and produce non-justice out here and they want to be unjust because they they've made a culture of anti-black racism and this culture of anti-black racism is going to have to stop number one we're not going to accept it and number two it's not working for you it's backfiring on you and i'm speaking to those in the dominant society all of you all the white and the white adjacent white supremacists meaning the white Hispanics, because there's a lot of these white Hispanics who are white supremacists too. But see, we're not just going to lay down. See, what they want to do with us, because their numbers are getting so low, again, I've said this many, many times, see, they want to create an apartheid state, whereas we're going to be um, a cowardly majority. See, they're going to have to learn how to rule as a minority, like in South Africa and other places. So what they expect of us is to be this large group of people who they can control as a minority out of fear. They can control us because we're going to be so afraid because the laws and everything are going to be so unjust. We're just going to have to go along with their abuse. And that's not happening. We're not going along with the abuse. Did y'all see the situation up there at an airport in Newark? In New Jersey, there was a former NFL player. I forgot the brother's name. I'm going to look at the story here. But he was an NFL player. I think he plays with some league in Canada right now. What's the brother's name? Um, What's his name? Uh, Brendan Langley. Okay, Brendan Langley. And I'm not going to show the video because I don't want to strike here. Um for promoting violence, but I'll show y'all some of the screenshots. The brother was at an airport and he was, um, the airline worker was fired, but this brother got into a brawl defending himself from this white United Airlines worker. Now, the white media tried to be slick. First, they tried to say, well, ex-NFL player beat up a United employee. They were trying to put all the blame on the black employee, uh, the, the, the black passenger. And they were showing a cutoff video of the fight. And they were leaving out the beginning of the video where this white United employee actually swung at the brother first. He hit the brother first and the brother beat the brakes off of this white employee. Put them fangs on his ass. And all the white supremacists online were trying to blame the black man. Oh, he hit him first. No, we kept showing the real footage where the black man, not only was he attacked first, several times in the video, the black man kept trying to walk away. He walked away several times. The white United employee kept running up on him. This brother kept trying to walk away and the the white employee kept running up, running up on him and the brother had to lay him down a couple of more times. The brother had to keep putting them fangs on him. So the police comes and arrest the brother. They gave him some little janky charge. And we were on United. I was tweeting United left and right the day it happened. And they ended up firing the dude. They fired this guy because they 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 probably know they didn't solve some some of the other footage and they saw that he started it. OK. The people at United, they didn't saw some other footage and they clearly saw and they probably talked to some other witnesses there because there were several witnesses. And they clearly saw that the white employees started it. But the white supremacists were real mad at this thing. They were real mad. Well, they're they're both in the wrong. No, they're not both in the wrong. They got this thing where black people are not supposed to defend themselves from white supremacist attacks. We're supposed to just lay down and be abused. No, we're not. And I'll reach out to that brother. I will contribute to any type of legal fund that he has concerning this case we have to start doing that when we see some of our people getting hemmed up we have to say hey we'll step in and help them legally 
But this whole narrative that we as black people, we're not supposed to do, to defend ourselves or they're going to put some janky Jim Crow charge on us. No, that's OK. We have a God given right to defend ourselves. Every mammal has a right to defend themselves. So do you. Don't ever be afraid to defend yourself no matter what. It's better to be judged by 12 than to be carried by six. Don't let nobody abuse you and possibly kill you. Always defend your damn self. We're not going to sit here and be some kind of cowardly majority while y'all try to run us as a minority. No, that's not going to work. And they have a problem with that because they see we're not backing down and we're the so-called minority over here. We're not backing down now as a minority. So they're thinking, damn, if we become a majority, how are we going to act for real, for real? And what's interesting, so many white supremacist suspects chimed in on this case blaming the black man none other than white actor alec baldwin ladies and gentlemen alec baldwin chimed in on this all right alec baldwin hold on he said he was talking about let me see what alec baldwin said he tweeted this and deleted it. Alec Baldwin had the damn nerve and he's trying to get back in good with white supremacist society. The guy working at the airport is the victim. He came to work to do a job, Baldwin wrote. The other guy with his big mouth is guilty of workplace abuse where people come to work with the expectation of safety and even civility. This a-hole who hit the guy should be put on a no-fly list. This is Alec Baldwin who shot somebody in the workplace. People were clowning the hell out of him. Alec, boy, you got a lot of nerve. This man shot somebody at the workplace on a film set. This fool shot and killed somebody. We're having trouble filming movies out here now. We got to have all types of safety experts on film sets now. When we're filming our movie that we, we got premiering pretty soon. We had to have all types of safety inspectors and fire marshals look at all the prop weapons and we had a bunch of toy guns and man they had to sit here and inspect them and we had to pay these people fifty dollars an hour and then they had to we got to stop filming and then they got to give a speech a safety speech this dude done messed all the he done messed the whole block up alex boy alec got a nerve on him don't he safety at work these people got nerves of steel boy the nerve but this is them getting on code this whole thing where we ain't supposed to protect ourselves the hell with that you protect yourself at all cost this whole thing where we're going to be the sacrificial negroes who sit up and suffer in silence and we're just going to get along and everybody else is supposed to get theirs while we sit here and suffer those days are over and these Negro politician shills who come out here and try to get us to go along with that, they have to be called out too. I got to show y'all this interview of Stacey Abrams out there in Georgia. She was on um, the 95 South show. Shout out to those brothers, Chico Bean, Carlos, um, DC Young Fly. Very funny brothers, man. Love those brothers. And I got to do their show. My brother Carlos, um, he sent me a DM on Instagram. He wanted me to do the show. I got to go down there and do that show when I go back to Atlanta. But they had Stacey Abrams on there. And I listened to Stacey Abrams and Chico Bean asked a very good question. And she started mammy splaining, towing the line, doing all of the Democratic shield answers about why they can't do nothing for us. And this is a crock of BS. I want y'all to hear this BS and we have to reject it all the way through. This is nothing but BS, ladies and gentlemen. We got to reject this nonsense about why they can't do anything for us. All right, listen to this. Hold on one second. Let me let me get this for you guys. Hold on. And it's why, why politicians are so afraid to say that they're doing something especially specifically for black people. Like they use the, the, the cloak of poor people and people, the under, of people of color, the underprivileged. Why is it that you can't just come out and say, I'm doing this for black people because black people need it because so many things have been done to us throughout the history of this country. So many things have been done to us, but very little has been done specifically for us. Why do you think that is? 
because African Americans represent 12% of the population. And so if you are a traditional politician doing the math, you think, if I name this group, I am going to lose other people. And I can't get, if every single black person voted for me, this may not get me what I want. So let me make it vague enough that other people don't get offended by helping. Oh, ma'am. Okay, L let's unpack that. Let's unpack that. Okay. Asians are how many, how much of the percentages do Asians represent? Asians are less than that. Asians, what are Asians? What, 7%? What's the population of Asians in America? Miss me with that. What's the population of Asians in America? My people in the chat room, help me out. Asians are less than 12% and they always mention Asians. Asians, they got all types of um, Asian, Asian, Asian hate crime, Asian hate crime. Money for Asians, money for Asians. Somebody said 9%. Somebody said 6%. I don't think they're 9%. I don't know. They're not as, somebody said 6%. They got all types of money for Asians. They got stop Asian hate all over the place, but they don't have stop anti-black hate. Miss me with that. And we are the economic base. They don't get elected because of the Asian vote. The Asian voting block ain't strong at all. In fact, Asians are the weakest voting block. Asians as a group, they're the most unreliable voting block. They don't vote like that. Don't let these people run this game on us. The LGBT, what's their percentage? And they got all types of resources and bills and policies and money for LGBT. Everything is LGBT. They're not a big voting block. Miss me. What is this mammy talking about? Hell, non-citizens, Afghanistanians and illegal immigrants and Ukrainians. You got non-citizens who are mentioned more than us who don't vote at all because they're not even citizens. They can't vote and they get mentioned and they get more resources than we get. Stacey Abrams can go to hell. Talking that nonsense, don't let them run that game on us family. She's full of it. Somebody said the LBGT is 1%. I believe that. They're not a big voting block. Man, please, don't let them run this con game on us, man. We ain't going for that. Hold on. Let me play the... Hold on, man. Hold on. Let me play it. Why do you think that is? Because African Americans represent 12% of the population. And so if you are a traditional politician doing the math, you think, if I name this group... I am going to lose other people and I can't get, if every single black person voted for me, this may not get me what I want. So let me make it vague enough that other people don't get offended by helping. Oh, that, you just gave me an idea. I hate to cut you off. But we, black people, we just gonna have to start finding like the candidate that we don't like the most. We just gotta act like we like them so won't nobody like them. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that shit. Like if we just showed up at the next election acting like we like them. The one person we really didn't like, can you try all that? the white people would be like, I don't know about this guy. If you could try this experiment in 2023, I would be greatly appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, 12%? We're 12%. We're maybe inching towards 13% of the population. So on a federal level, that's been part of the problem, that it's been a challenge. Now, I got into trouble from a lot of folks when I ran in 2018 because I specifically talked about black people. But I also talked about Latinos. I talked... When in the hell did Stacey Abrams talk specifically about doing something for black people? What is she talking about? What is she, when does she talk about doing something specifically to help black people? Because she says she talked about black people. See, that was a word trick she just did. That was a little sleight of hand she just did. Well, I specifically talked about black people. Talking about black people, how? What did you talk about doing for black people? I'm talking about doing something doing not just mention hey black lives matter no what did you talk about doing for black people nothing i no, she didn't no she didn't no she i no 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 she did not talk about doing anything for black people don't let these people do these sleight of hand word salad um lies out here man she tried to be slick with that she didn't she never talked about doing anything for black people then she she 
tried to clean it up. Then I talked about Latinos, and no, that ain't talking about doing something for black people. I talked about doing something for black people. Then I talked about Latinos. Then I talked about this and that. No, she thought she was being slick by saying that. She never talked about doing anything for black people. Don't let these folks lie like that. Hold on. Let me play the rest. Hold on. Hold on. We're maybe inching towards 13% of the population. So on a federal level, that's been part of the problem, that it's been a challenge. Now, I got into trouble from a lot of folks when I ran in 2018 because I specifically talked about black people. But I also talk about Latinos. I talk about Asian Americans because each of those communities face different challenges. But I wake up black. I go to sleep black. So she just, she lied and tried to clean it up. And I live black. And for me, it is, it is anathema to pretend that I am not who I am. I'm not always going to only talk about what we can do for black people. But I... But... Okay. But y'all talk about what you're only going to do for Asians. Y'all talk about what you're only going to do for LGBT people. You talk about what you're only going to do for the Jewish community. They just had something. They just passed a resolution to condemn anti-Semitism the other day. And that resolution, they don't mention us. They don't mention black folks. Everything is Jewish, 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 anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism. And I think this is in response to that white supremacist killer who shot all the black people. He had some anti-Semitic writing. So they immediately put a resolution together for the Jewish community. But nothing for us. Man, don't let these people run game on us. Yeah, she just pulled a Kamala. Well, I can't talk about, I ain't gonna ever talk about what I'm gonna do for black people, but you talk about what you're gonna do for other groups specifically all the time. So no, we're not going to support you. No, we're not supporting you. Hold on. But I wake up black, I go to sleep black, and I live black. And for me, it and, is- And, and, it and is. that's, and look. That right there, well, I'm black, I go to sleep black, I'm like, no, we're not gonna live vicariously through you. You're not just gonna show up and you being black is all that is to it, no. They got this thing where, look, I'm black, so just live through me. I'm gonna get a lot of goodies for caping for other people and I'm gonna be in a nice position, so look up to me and live through me. No, no thank you. We're not gonna live vicariously through you. Black people, particularly foundational black Americans, need tangibles. We're not going to vote for you if you're not going to do anything for us. And you talking about, well, I'm black, I wake up black, that ain't good enough. You just waking your big black ass up and saying, hey, look at me, that ain't it. I'm not voting for you just because you black. You're going to have to do something for black folks. You're going to have to do something tangible for black folks. Y'all not going to run this game on us. The hell are you talking about? The Democrats are insane. They talk to us like we stupid. Hold on. We play the rest. I talk about Asian Americans because each of those communities face different challenges. But I wake up black, I go to sleep black, and I live black. And for me, it is... It is hell. Candace Owens is black. Omarosa is black. Jesse Lee Peterson is black. Clarence Thomas is black. Herschel Walker is black. So what you talking about? What that mean? The hell does you being black mean? It is anathema to pretend that I am not who I am. I'm not always going to only talk about what we can do for black people, but I'm always going to make certain I am thinking about how we serve the black community. And I think it is disingenuous to walk away from it, but I, but to your, to your point, people want to know why it happened. Man, man, okay, okay. I'm, I'm about to have a stroke with this. Okay. Ma'am, you contradicted yourself. If you're not going to talk about specifically what black people need, well, you're going to talk about what will affect the black community. No, no, no. It, it don't work like that. We have specific needs. We're, specific, we're specifically targeted with anti-black hatred out here. We are treated like no other group is treated. So you can't talk about what the black community needs without addressing us specifically. Because when you address other groups and tie us in, you undermine us and then y'all end up cashing out the other groups. Hold on. It's disingenuous to walk away from it, but, I, but to, your, to your point, people want to know why it happens. It's anathema to pretend that I am not who I am. I'm not always going to only talk about what we can do for black people, but I'm always going to make certain I'm thinking about how we serve the black community. She's 
thinking about how she can serve the, uh, did y'all catch that? I can't speak on the black community, but I'll make sure I'm thinking about how we can serve. Damn it, we don't need your thoughts. You're also thinking about Popeye's chicken. We don't give a damn about your thoughts. Are you insane, Democrats? The white Democrats, this is the best you got? We don't give a damn about what you think. You can't do nothing for us, but you think we'll think about what you need. I I keep you in my, my thoughts and prayers. I'll keep you in my thoughts and prayers. This fool sat here talking about she'll think about what we need. Y'all catch that. Look at the wording that they're doing here. Hold on. Just catch all of it. I keep playing it over. I go to sleep black and I live black. And for me, it is it is anathema to pretend that I am not who I am. I'm not always going to only talk about what we can do for black people, but I'm always going to make certain I am thinking about how we serve the black community. And I think it is disingenuous to walk away from it, but, I, but to, your, to your point, people want to know why it happens. It happens because in the math, it's hard to win an election with just black people. Right. Okay, ma'am, if you don't, okay. Ma'am, if you don't go to hell, it's not hard because y'all was sitting up here bragging, talking about, well, yeah, black people carried Biden. It was black people. Oh, the black women, black girl magic. It was black girl magic that got Biden. Ain't that what y'all was saying? They were running around here talking about the black girl magic. It was Biden, black people who got Biden over. She going to think about what the black community needs, ma'am. You ain't thinking about what we need. You're thinking about honey buns and Lipton iced tea or something, ma'am. You're not thinking about us and we don't need your damn thoughts. This whole narrative that, well, we can't do nothing for black people because the white supremacists are going to get offended. That's that whole line. See, yeah, people go, if we, come on now, if we do something for y'all, you know them white supremacists gonna be mad and the only people who gonna get mad are white supremacists, okay? If you're mad because black people are getting something justly and rightfully from the government that we prop up and we pay taxes to, and if somebody white is mad, that's a white supremacist. And the fact that you guys prioritize the feelings of white supremacists over the needs of black people shows how deep the anti-black racism works and why in the hell should we vote for you then? We're not going to be the dirty little secret that you keep in the goddamn basement. We're not playing that game as black people. We, wait, come on now. Y'all go around the building. I, I let you hold a little something. Not, I can't show you. I can't give it to you right here. Go around the building. I give it to you. No, we ain't doing these little dirty, shitland circuit ass, red light district deals where y'all got a slum with us. We ain't doing that. No, go. No, look, listen, listen. I, I can't really, I can't say nothing about you right here, but go. I got some catfish nuggets in the back. Go around in the back. Jim Clyburn back there waiting on you. Y'all not treating us like we're some little runaway picking any slaves that you guys got to hide and get the hell out of here. Those days are over. We have to stop going along with that. We have to stop co-signing that janky, tacky ass narrative that we can't get anything because it offends the white supremacists. I don't give a damn about the feelings of the white supremacists because we're sitting up here not getting nothing and they hate us anyway. They're going up here doing mass shootings against us. They don't like us anyway, so we might as well get something. Black people, black people, please stop giving a damn about what white supremacists think. There's a reason why I'm so popular worldwide and so hated by the white supremacists because I, I could give less than a damn about what they think or what they feel. And they don't want the, the mindset that I have to be contagious. This whole fear of what a damn white supremacist think, man, the hell with them, man. God didn't put you on this earth to be fearful of these cowards. You better walk into God energy. If you respect God, you walk into the God energy and you walk through that energy with fearlessness. Man, the secret of life is to live without fear. And y'all running around here scared of these damn white supremacists, scared to say what you need, scared to call them out, scared to check them. 
while they're doing evil. You can't speak God energy and you're scared of the damn evil devil energy of the white supremacists. They have devil satanic energy and you bow down to it. That means you're no better than them. You don't bow down to that damn energy and then run around talking about how godly you are and Jesus this and Jesus that and Allah this or whatever. You don't bow down to the white supremacists and then claim that you believe in God. God doesn't want you to do that. That's why I walk into my God truth every day. You better stop being in fear of these satanic bastards. Their own energy is destroying them. Look at what's happening to them. Their own energy is destroying them. The universe is retaliating against the white supremacist. And just because they send their mammies out trying to toe the line for them, y'all get these mammies out of here too. They have Stacey Abrams as the designated mammy. They send them down to the community to explain what we ain't gonna damn get. Send your mammy ass back and tell Massa, where's my money? We ain't on the plantation no more. We're maroons now. And tell Massa, I need my damn money, mammy. And wipe them butter biscuit crumbs off your mouth when you come down here talking to me too. Don't ever let nobody come back to the black community talking about where I can't mention y'all. You know, these white folks be tripping. You know, we can't get no election if we mention you. No, hell no. What the hell? What, why you want me to vote then? Don't come to me asking me for no damn vote if we got some little janky ass deal that you got with us. You don't talk to other groups like that. We have to stop disrespect. You wouldn't go to Asian saying, I can't do nothing for y'all because the white folks be mad. Don't ever, we gotta stop letting people talk to us like that, family. Please stop letting these people talk to us like that and treat us like we're garbage. Get your big musty ass back over there to the White House and tell Biden and Kamami, cut our damn check and get our paper right. Boy, that offended me more than anything. We can't do nothing for y'all because y'all 12% and you got Asians and other groups that's way less than that and you got the red carpet rolled out for them. Don't lie to my face. Come on, black family. We should have been on this wave a long time ago. These people are gonna have to break bread or we will not support them. It's that simple. They're going to have to give us tangibles and the whole culture of anti-black racism they're gonna to have to come up with a new culture because see, we going along with it, that emboldens the culture. We have to always resist that. We're not gonna be nobody's sacrificial lambs where we have to sit here and be subjugated where everybody gets a psychotic, a psychological thrill watching us subjugate and they're not being subjugated. Damn that, come up with another culture. This ain't gonna work for us. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of Tariq Radio. Thank you guys for tuning in. Much respect to the family. Hey, man, go to officialfba.com. Get all the great products there. Again, we got a we got a package deal coming real soon. I guess it's going to be a Juneteenth package deal. It'll, it'll be popping for the month of June. Well, not, not for the month of June, but during June, during a certain time of June. I, I'll keep people posted on, on it. I'm, I'm still getting everything together. Um, a lot of great things we got going on. June is going to be a very wonderful month, man. It's going to be a very celebratory month. Um, we're going to you know, announce the new film. We're going to announce what the new streaming site is going to be. Uh, we got a great package deal for June. A lot of Juneteenth celebrations going on. And plus, my new baby girl is going to be born in June. We just saw, went to, we did our last ultrasound today. Looking at her lovely face inside her mama's stomach so we're waiting on the baby anxiously again this baby's our new daughter is just taking forever to get here seems like my wife has been pregnant for two damn years with this baby i swear to goodness this is the longest pregnancy lord i swear this pregnancy seemed like it's been long as hell i told people we're going to have an old baby the baby's gonna be an old lady we're gonna have an old infant the baby is gonna be born and come in the house and put plastic over the sofa covers the baby's just gonna be doing old woman stuff. The baby's gonna come in and turn the air off and close the door so we don't let out all the cold air. 
we're gonna have an old baby. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have an old baby. Lord, this baby's gonna be old. We have the pregnancy is forever. This is a long ass. Don't it seem like my lady's been pregnant for a long ass time? Damn, this pregnancy's been long as hell. <laughs> Good grief. Her stomach just big as hell. Good God. She's gonna be she's gonna come out the womb knitting a sweater. Damn, it's gonna be an old baby. We're gonna name her as Clotilda or something. We're gonna give her an old name. Baby Clotilda Nasheed. <laughs> baby Fannie Mae Nasheed. We're gonna give her an old name. Damn, this is gonna be an old baby. So we're waiting, boy. We got uh, what? We got two weeks, I think. The baby's due in two weeks. So this is gonna be a long two weeks, man. But again, I shout out to everybody who bought the baby, um, baby clothes, and everybody sent all that stuff on Amazon. Much respect to y'all, man. But anyway, man, June, let's get ready for June. June is going to be a dynamic month, man. We're going to make it do what it do in the month of June. So anyway, man, y'all have a great night, man. Puppy Akute and Lola Vube to the family, man. Y'all be good. I'll talk to y'all in a couple of days. Peace.